Since the announcement of Live 10, we've all heard about the major additions, things like capture, multi-clip editing, and the new devices. But there's really been a ton of new additions and improvements. And in this video, I'd like to look at one of them that most likely flew under most people's radar, but I find to be very important. Now before watching this video, I'd recommend watching my previous video on interacting with Live's API. That'll help you understand why what I'm covering in this video is so important. The second section of that video covers using a controller with Max for Live. In order to properly do that, I had to use a dedicated MIDI track and use the routing of that track to communicate with the controller, which is pretty cumbersome. And that's precisely what's changed now in Live 10. So let's jump in and take a look at how this has been improved. First of all, you may have noticed in the LOM documentation for Live 9, this section on control surfaces. This covers an interface that some scripts had that made working with that script from Max for Live devices much easier. Unfortunately though, only a handful of scripts use this interface. In Live 10, virtually every one of the built-in scripts, aside from legacy scripts, has access to this interface. So let's take a look at how this works. For this video, I'll be using the Launch Control XL, and for this first example, I'll be using it with its built-in script, also called Launch Control XL. On the left here, I have a Max for Live device that uses the interface that we just looked at. The most important parts of that interface are Grab Control and its counterpart, Release Control. Now right now, this first fader is controlling the volume of the first track. I can now select that control in my Max for Live device, which will grab it. And once it's been grabbed, it'll no longer control that track volume, and instead its value is just being fed into a message box. And you can use this value in any way you like within your Max for Live device. When I'm done using the control, I can release it back to the script. And now once again, it's controlling track volume. Now notice something else that's going on here. In the lower right hand corner, I'm observing the name and value of the parameter that's being controlled. This is possible because I have access to the control, and so I also have access to what it's controlling. Let me give you another example with this button. Right now, it's toggling the mute state of the first track. If I grab it, once again, the value will be fed into the message box, and I can also send it values to control its LED. So you can see here it's flickering between different colors. And again, I can release it so that it can go back to muting the track again. So in my opinion, this is really useful because you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get all the great functionality of a control surface script, and then you can extend it in Max for Live in a very efficient way. This is great and all, but what if you have a controller that there is no corresponding built-in script for? Well, no worries on that. The next two options we look at are gonna address that specifically. The first option is a user remote script. If you're not sure what that is or how to create one, there's a link to a video in the description that covers that. It is quite an old video though, so my apologies in advance. At any rate, user remote scripts are defined in simple text files where you just specify the MIDI messages of your controller. So I've created one of these for the Launch Control XL. It's called My URS, or My User Remote Script. And I can use this with the interface exactly how I use the built-in script. So again, right now I'm controlling volume. I can grab the control on my device. And then when I'm ready, I can release it back to the script. So once again, I get all the functionality of the script and then can add additional functionality in my Max for Live devices. This last option is brand new. It was just added in the last update of the beta. It's a new script called Max for Live. Now, unlike the other two scripts, this script actually doesn't have any functionality. It simply allows you to register controls, which you can then use in your Max for Live devices. So it's essentially an interface between your Max for Live device and your controller. So here I've got the Max for Live script selected, and here I have a device that communicates with it. The most important thing to know about this script is this function called register MIDI control. This function takes three arguments, the name of the control, fader one in this case, the status byte, which is composed of the message type and MIDI channel, a CC on channel nine in this case, and then the note or CC number, 77 in this case. So to reiterate, I'll be registering a control named fader one that sends control change number 77 on MIDI channel nine. And I simply have to call this function to register the control and now I can observe its value and use it just like we saw in the previous examples. 